Hey, it's Larry Gonzalez with your housing market update. Halfway through the month of September, we had a lot of big news. I want to clear the smoke from the room and give you a little bit of my feedback on where we're at with the housing market, with interest rates, and everything else. Without further ado, let's get going. All right, prices, prices are up. That's good news. Inventory, inventory is up too. We'll get into that a little bit. And then rates, rates are actually sideways this week, which is kind of surprising and might be contrary to what most people are thinking based on what happened with the Fed. All right, so let's talk about the headline news. First, the Fed yesterday on Wednesday, they finished their Federal Open Market Committee meeting and they decided to lower the Fed funds rate by 50 basis points. That's a good thing. All right, home builder sentiment and activity is going up. That is also a very good thing because one of the things that we are lacking across the country is inventory. We need more homes, and that's a good thing. All right, existing home sales, though, slump. But this is for the month of August. These are people who went in a contract in June and July before rates really started to come down. Let's get into some of this news. First, let's talk about the Fed. The Fed cut the Fed funds rate. I saw this all over the internet. And a lot of people calling me and texting me and emailing me say, Hey, Larry, did mortgage rates come down? I heard the Fed drop mortgage rates by 50% or 50 basis points. It's not the same. Fed funds rate and mortgage rates are not the same. All right, here's two graphs showing Fed funds rate, showing mortgage rates. Fed funds rate, the Fed did decrease the Fed funds rate from 5.375. They were down about 4.875 right now. That's great. We asked the first time that we dropped the Fed funds rate in almost four years, actually over four years. That's good. But you know what happened afterwards? Interest rates went up. Mortgage rates went up. The reason why is because ever since the end of July, when the Fed announced that they weren't going to cut the Fed funds rate, we had a lower PC, a lower inflation report, and then we had a really kind of a blockbuster bad uh, jobs report, and unemployment actually went up to 4.3%. All right, it was a jump from 4.1 to 4.3 percent. The Fed recognized this and has basically been telling us all along since the end of July we are going to cut the Fed funds rate. The only thing we didn't know is was it going to be 25 basis points or 50 basis points. But you can see when you look at this, this is average 30 year fixed rate mortgage for VA loans. You can see from the end of July a sharp decrease in mortgage rates across the board. Expectation that the Fed is going to drop the Fed funds rate, mortgage rates were already reflecting that. Okay, they're already reflecting that. So no surprise. What caused interest rates to go up afterwards is a different story. And we'll get into that a little bit here. First, let's get into the Fed statement. The Fed cut the funds rate by 50 basis points down to 4.875. That's great news. There was only one dissenter. And this was the first person, first governor to dissent in 19 years. All right, this governor's been talking about and this, she's out of uh, San Francisco. She's been talking about raising the Fed funds rate forever. She's just not convinced that we should be lowering the Fed funds rate. But the Fed has a dual mandate. They need to maintain stable prices, i.e. maintain control of inflation. And that we're getting there. They want 2%. We're at 2.6%. They want maximum employment. So the Fed's focus, they think they got inflation largely under control. But they're really concerned about unemployment. It spiked from 4.1% the 4.3%, and then this last month in September, it showed 4.2%. So they're really focusing now on unemployment. In their remarks on the unemployment, they stated that job gains have slowed, where previously they said that they had moderated. So there's a big difference there, slowing versus moderating, which is just kind of steady eddy. They still believe, the Fed still believes the economy is solid, Heck, you just saw retail sales went up, all right? And, and you know why? Because of Amazon Prime Day. Guess why? So blame Amazon for retail sales going up. Who would have thunk it? And they also stated that they are going to continue their quantitative tightening. And what is that? Basically, the Fed buys mortgage-backed securities and treasuries. They're not doing that anymore. Once they mature, they're coming off their books. So they're tightening the amount of money that they have under their control. So let's look at their economic projections, their forecasts. Forecast Fed funds rate. They had two more meetings this year. They're expected to cut 25 basis points at each meeting. There's no guarantee. And as a matter of fact, they said don't expect another 50 basis point uh, decrease to the Fed funds rate. Expect maybe two 25 basis point decreases. And then additionally, they forecast 100 basis points of decreases over the course of 2025. Inflation, they think that by the end of 2024, inflation will be right about where it's at, at 2.6%. 
And then we will not get down to 2.2% until 2020, into 2025, maybe 2026. Unemployment, we're currently at 4.2%, as I said. All right, by the end of 2024, they expect us to be at 4.4%, and they want to keep us steady there. They don't want us to get above 4.5%. All right, it wasn't too long ago we were at a 50-year low on unemployment at 3.7%. We've actually gone up over the last five or six months for up to 4.3%. They want to get control of that unemployment. GDP, currently at 3%. They expect it to be at 2% at the end of the year and stay around 2% in 2025. The economy is not going to crash, but they expect at soft landing. They fully expect it. And they, you know what? People don't want to hear them saying, oh, the economy is going to crash. So they are forecasting a smooth landing. We shall see. One of the items that comes out of the Fed meeting is the Fed dot plot. And that's kind of what we see in front of us. And basically, those are the voting members. They each indicate where they believe the Fed funds rate will be at the end of the year. For the rest of 2024, they believe we're going to have a 25 to a 50 basis point cut for the rest of the year. You can see the, the green numbers, but most of the little blue dots, that's where they expect the Fed funds rate to be. The right line is where the Fed fund percentage is. The bottom is the uh, is the year. 2025, the expectation, majority expectation is that we'll see a 100 basis point drop over the course of next year. And then really anything after that, that's just, they're just throwing numbers out there. All right, and not a lot of movement there. They're really looking near term to, to the next, you know, 20, 12 months. So, uh, so that's kind of what we can expect to see. But again, this is all data dependent. All right, unemployment rate forecast. In June, the projection was we would be at 4.0, 4.1% majority expectations. That's where unemployment would be. Remember, we were at near all-time lows at 3.6% before then. Unemployment shot up, and now you're getting a majority of Fed members saying, hey, we expect unemployment to be between 4.2 and 4.5%. 4 uh, over the course of the rest of the year. They expect unemployment to stay high. That's just something to keep an eye on. Uh, again, the, the BLS jobs report hasn't been 100% accurate. You've seen a lot of revisions to that, but we'll see what happens uh, moving forward. After every meeting, the Fed Chair Powell, he gives a press conference, and uh, we're getting, just getting used to seeing him. We've, he's been there for so long. Fed, again, doesn't see a recession ahead of us. They expect spending and growth to remain resilient, and yeah, hey, people are going to keep spending and putting money on credit cards. 50 basis points is, they say, is their commitment uh, not to fall behind. They don't think they're behind the power curve, uh, and they don't don't expect future 50 basis point cuts. They're going to go little by little. Uh, they don't want to go create this huge curve of, of craziness uh, within the markets. One of the things that they recognize for inflation is that market rents are decreasing, but slowly, and it is going to take time for the lower rents to filter into the inflation readings. So, uh, just something to keep an eye on, but that's what they were talking about. And I think the reason why the interest rate, mortgage rates went up was because there is an expectation, maybe a desire by some folks for us to have another 100 basis point uh, decrease in the Fed funds rate before the end of the year. I just don't think that's going to happen, nor does the Fed. Well, that's a lot. That's a lot of news about the Fed. Let me tell you that. Well, let's talk about the home builders. Home builders are getting kind of happy here. Still negative overall, but we broke a four month negative streak. We're still below 50. Anything above 50 is positive. Anything below 50 for their sentiment is negative. And, uh, it, but we went from 39 to 41. So that's good news. And the reason why it's you no, know, no duh. It's, it's the fact that interest rates are coming down. All right. And, and below 50 means we're in a contraction territory. But guess what? Future sales expectations cracked above 50. You can see that number right there. That's very good. And you saw both fire traffic. And current sales expectations move up just a little bit. So good news there. Expect to see these numbers continue to increase as builders gain more confidence that inflation and interest rates are coming down. New home construction. This is a big rebound. July was a stinker month. All right. But we had more permits, uh, almost a 5% increase in permits month over month. We had almost 10% increase in completions, up to 1.79 million completions. That's great. We're actually up over 30% completions from last year to this year. And building permits hit a five-year high. All right, so that is great news. Builders are they're getting back into the game. They're actually getting some work done. Uh, that, that is great news. That is great news. Completions up at 30% year over year. So we need to see more of that. And, and again, builders, they are not going to overbuild. They've already done that in certain areas. You can see prices coming down. 
in certain parts of the country, Florida and Texas being uh, two, main, two of the main ones where you're seeing home prices come down. Across the rest of the USA, you're starting to see these numbers go up, and that's great news. All right, let's do a real quick look at active listings. Before COVID, across this is across the country, this isn't in one area, but it's certainly really similar to what we have here in Hawaii. Active listings, 1.24 million uh, before COVID. August 2023, they had dropped to 670,000, almost dropped in half. Well, since last year, the number of active listings have gone up to 909,000, so almost splitting where we were in 2023 to before COVID. That is great news. We need more inventory because that's going to help buyers kind of go from the, the terrible seller's market we had to something a little more balanced. But if interest rates to continue to go down, and I would say if they go down another point, if they go down another point, expect that inventory to drop again. And that is going to cause home prices to go up. So uh, this here is, is pretty uh, telling, and we really got to keep an eye. If active inventory goes down because interest rates are going down, you're going to start seeing home prices go up. All right, they're going to go up, and they're going to go up a lot. Existing home sales for the month of August actually went down. We had a July had broken a string of about five months of decreased existing sales. August was not very good. You got to take things into consideration. Existing home sales in August for people who went into contract in June and July. Interest rates really didn't start coming down until, until the end of July. That's when we saw interest rates come down a lot. So I think we may see existing home sales go up for September. We'll see in a month. But supply of homes is up again from 1.3 million to 1.35 million. 4.2 months supply of homes. So that's good. That's going up from four months of supply. Median price, though, is down. All right. Because of this interest rates being just sticky kind of high. All right. Home prices came down a little bit from, I think, 423 down to 417,000. 26 days on market up from 24, but but that's still low, less than 30 days. That means homes are moving. If they're priced right, they're moving within 30 days, and that's pretty solid. Let's take a look at the who's buying. First-time home buyers actually dropped from 29 down to 26%. Even cash buyers dropped from 27 down to 26%. And investors, hey, investors, people who have money, guess what they're doing? They're buying homes. They actually went up from 13% of all purchases to 19% of all purchases. So investors, people who have money, realize the value of home ownership, all right, because they can use it for rentals, short-term, long-term rentals. I know I have a couple myself, always looking for other options out there. So uh, investors up from 13% to 19%. That's a big number. Okay, real quick, we're going to look at uh, initial jobless claims. Initial jobless claims were down 12,000 to 219,000. Continuing claims down 14,000 to 1.829 million. Could be because hiring is slowing, or it could be the benefits that people had who are on continuing claims are expiring. We probably think it's the benefits are expiring, but still some to keep an eye on. And certainly the Fed is looking at these numbers as well. VA rates, yeah, I showed it to you on another slide earlier. VA rates, the, you can see right at the end of the month here, they went up just a little bit, but still, hey, steady into the mid to high 5% range for VA rates. That's very good. Again, these are not my rates specifically. These are rates uh, taken across the country, uh, just a, a slice of uh, interest rates and what people are reporting in. So right now, say mid fives for VA, still looking very good, much better than we were uh, in July when we were at 6.5% and even 7% in May. What does this all mean? Well, let me tell you what. Applications are up. Third week in a row. People, they don't want to rent. People want to own. Renting sucks, all right? You're paying somebody else's mortgage. Nobody wants to do that, all right? They want to own a home, all right? And there are so many benefits of home ownership. People want to buy. Apps up 5%, third week in a row. Refinance activity up 24%, all right, last week and up 127% year over year. People are saving money. I know most of the people that I'm refinancing are saving between $300 and $1,000 a month on their mortgage payment because they are dropping their rate by over a point, sometimes a point and a half. Don't just do a refi to do a refi, though. Got to make It has to make sense for you. All right, it has to make sense. All right, and if you want to take advantage of these rates, got to at least get pre-approved. You got to at least send me your mortgage statement. We can run the numbers. We can do the scenario. There is no guarantee that rates are going to stay low. All right, there are no guarantees. And people who are waiting for rates to come down, they may. 
but they may not. And guess what? Then you're screwed and you're paying a thousand dollars more a month than you really need to be. Don't sit on the sides. At least get your numbers. At least know what your buying power is. At least know what your refinance power is. And sellers, hey, stay positive. Homes are going to start coming off the market. You saw there's an increase in applications. That is good for you. All right, that's all I have for you this week. Have a great weekend and stay positive. We'll talk to you later. Aloha.